So my daughter drew a picture of me for Father's Day. So I decided to decorate it in my office. So if you're wondering what that is, that's that's me. That's that's my face. Let's get started. Greetings fellow Magic the Gathering enthusiasts. Thank you for checking out my channel. I'm Jam Sam and today I wanted to move away from the uh, the four color treasure deck. Don't worry, I will go back to that deck. I want to find the best of one. I just haven't had the time to really work on that deck. Um, so I wanted to try out something fun and a little less competitive, I would think, which is Bant Fight Rigging or Rigged Brokers as I have named it over here. Yeah, I really wanted to try out the whole uh, fight rigging deck. It seems like a lot of fun. Though, I think a lot of people tends to go more the Jund route for this. It's a great combo with Shakedown Heavy and Valky. You know, 7 meta Planeswalker on turn 4. That's just insane. But I wanted to do something a little bit different, so I went with Brokers. And main focus here is kind of similar. Fight rigging turn 3, Reservoir Kraken turn 4. Then you can have a turn 4, Elspeth, Vorinclex, or the Tarask. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing this correct. Tarask? Tarask. I'm gonna go with Tarask. A 9 mana 10 10 that has haste and ward 10 and fights a creature every time it attacks on turn 4. Uh, that's pretty much game over right there. The only thing it's missing is trample, which is where Kodama the West Tree comes into play. And that's pretty much the basic idea. You're either doubling counters with uh, Vorinclex or just hitting for a lot with the Tarask. Both of these have haste, so when you get it down on turn 4, you can actually attack with it because fight rigging triggers before the declaring attacker's phase. And if you get Elspeth, well, Elspeth is just a really good planeswalker. When you're watching this video, you'll notice that uh, I had Behold the Multiverse in here. That's because I didn't have Hopeful Initiate at the beginning of this uh, video. I kind of treated this as almost like a mid-rangey deck, which I don't think was the correct way to go. I, I needed to treat this as a aggro deck. So halfway through, I, I, I realized I need to get rid of Behold the Multiverse and replaced it with Hopeful Initiate. So for our one drop, we have Hopeful Initiate. For our two drops, we have arguably the best two drop in here, uh, Luminarch Aspirant. We also have Prosperous Innkeeper, Inscription of Abundance. It's our only removal in here. Then for our three drops, obviously we have Fight Rigging, three Brokers Ascendancies. We have three Kodama the West Tree. Then we have Disciplined Duelist. I was a little bit iffy about this card at first, but after trying it out, this is a pretty decent creature. It's a 2-1 uh, double strike for one green, one white, and one blue. Discipline Duelist enters the battlefield with a shield counter on. Four drop, we have four Reservoir Kraken. So the Kraken's in here mainly for triggering fight rigging on turn four. It has War 2, so it's hard to kill. And if the opponent does have enough creatures to tap it down, you get a 1-1 one, one unblockable creature you can either use as a blocker or you can grow the 1-1 one, one fish into a pretty big threat that's unblockable. A lot of opponents don't think about that. 5 drop, we have Elspeth. 6 drop, we have Vorinclex. Not only to double our tokens, but also prevent opponents from getting plus one plus one counters. So one thing that a lot of people forget is with Vorinclex, their sagas don't work anymore. And then we have two copies of the Tarask. Yeah, uh, that's enough talking. Let's check out the gameplay! Our oppo opponent is... Chatton? Chatton? So I played a game before this. Uh, basically went up against Mono White. Didn't draw our third land till it was a little bit too late. My we'll keep this... Um, because now I know I have four lands, though might not have been the best idea. We are up against Selesnia. Let's see. Might be, uh, might, might, might be, uh, I was gonna say, uh, runes, but definitely not runes. Definitely not runes. All right, and this time we're drawing way too much land. Which isn't always a bad thing. We'll see. Let's see what kind of trickery they've got. 
Nothing so far. Come on! I only have two of these in here. I drew both of them. I, drew... I swear these decks do not get shuffled in the first couple games. I don't know if this is a good attack. Okay, apparently it was. They could have had a spell, which could have pumped up uh, the Luminancer, but... I mean, if they have all the cards, they're just gonna... <laughs> they could just one-shot me here, and I didn't draw anything. Uh, I'm not gonna block that. So they might have a protection spell. So how do we want to do this? Now if I use the Discipline Duelist to fight, I will lose my shield counter. I don't know if that's something I want to do. Okay. So let's see if they do anything. Okay. Well then, I can do 8 damage. And see if I can get rid of one of their creatures. So, yeah, I'll go put it in there. There. See what kind of protection spell they got. Okay. Oh, I know I was complaining a lot. I've, I've been. I've been losing a lot lately, and it's been very tilting. <laughs> so the pros Prosperous Innkeeper is here just to kind of make like a last minute block. Though they could give their creature... Um, what's the word? Okay. I think we go ahead and take this. Alright. We're gonna do this main phase. Just because I'm tired of not getting anything. Uh, we do have enough for Vorinclex. And we can play a Aspirant now. I guess we'll just put it right there. And they have to block, right? And I don't think... Well, I guess if they have something like Tamio's uh, safekeeping. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> what did they? Made it into 3 3 elephant with trample. Why? Why did they do that? They didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Hello there. I shall teach you much. Okay. So they go for guiding voice. So they're gonna tap out. Travel, so I'm not gonna block. 
<laughs> Alright, I, I don't know what was going on there. So I just had a very short game with uh, Mono Green where um, they made a bad attack and then they just conceded. And I was just talking away and I look over, wasn't recording, just wasn't recording. All right, we are on the draw, and no green mana means we mulligan. All right, this is much better. I think we do it like this. Though, we don't have a play until turn three. It's amazing that we had like one of each play, uh, basic lands. What are the chances of that happening? Quick, somebody do the math. All right, so we're up against Is it? Not sure. You know, I'm not really sure. Behold, the multiverse is correct for this deck. Like, I wonder if I should be going a lot more aggressive. Like, I could... I could be going a lot more aggressive. Possibly having, like, uh... What, what was that, um... What is that, uh, creature with the, uh, that learns? Oh my god, uh, something, that, it wasn't a friend. Hopeful Initiate, that's it. God, I knew I was going to get it. Hopeful Initiate. Maybe I could add some Hopeful Initiate in here for, like, the early game. Maybe add a little bit more planes into the deck. You know, kind of take from Mono White. Hope, hope, and since we're dealing with uh, counters, Hope Initiate might not be a bad plus. Alright. I think Kodama? Okay, so they probably have a Fading Hope. I'm assuming. I'm just assuming. Maybe now they're just contemplating which one to Fading Hope. Maybe it's not a Fading Hope? Maybe it's a Consider. I don't know. Guess it wasn't a Fading Hope. We'll get one island and one plane. That's the one thing I like about having a double strike on uh, with Kodama. So you can get two triggers off of one attack. So if we draw a land... Oof. Uh, no blocks. So if we draw a land, we could technically get fight rigging off. Nope, we didn't draw a land. Alright, so... We could go double fight rigging. Then Kodama would be a pretty good uh, block against... Goldspine Dragon. Though, I don't know. Uh, we'll go for Broker's Ascendancy for that one, I guess. <laughs> I 
I don't know if it was a good idea to tap out here, but... Jesus. We'll go for a double Invoker's Ascendancy. <laughs> And then we'll just attack with the uh, double strike. Uh, I guess we'll get a forest and a plains. Because those are my only choices. Let's we'll see if they have any uh, removal. I mean, they have plenty of uh, mana and plenty of cards. They could definitely have like, all kinds of removal. They could just have a second gold spent dragon. Oh, okay. Well. We'll just do that. They have a lot of treasures, so they could definitely do a, a lot here. They're not. I guess they're still thinking about it. Maybe they have a lot of choices. We'll go Reservoir Kraken. Okay. And do Kodama Westry. Alright, so. We'll go. I don't know. We'll go here. And then we'll go here. This way they both will trigger, but I can spread out the uh, plus one, plus one counters. And they could definitely tap my cracking here and... Uh... Though maybe I should have gone for the... Maybe I should have put the plus one, plus one on the Kodama. Then it would have traded with the Goldspan Dragon. Yeah, that was a that wasn't very smart. Yeah, I definitely should have put it on the Kodama. That was a bad idea on my part. Ah oh, man. I hope that doesn't come to bite me in. But I mean, they still got a lot of a lot of cards in hand. Oh, but never mind. Kodama's gonna be like a 5 5 anyway. As long as it doesn't die right away. Because I, sh I should be getting the uh, Broker's Ascendancy. Though. Is my opponent roping me? Like, I don't think I've. Like, he's definitely got quite a bit of a threat as well. Oh, okay. What just happened? Okay, that was weird. So, we've got a couple good blocks, but unfortunately, 
If they have a magma opus or anything else that could uh, remove two of my creatures, then I think I lose. Oh, they made the combat. Okay, well. Oh, what am I doing? Definitely got some blocks. Now, what are they going to do after this? Okay. Surprised they didn't do that before blocks, but okay. Huh. I was just about to, you know. <laughs> why why do they why why do they concede? <laughs> Alright, so I made some adjustments to the deck. I added a hopeful initiate. And and that that's pretty much about it. I removed uh I, re I removed uh, what is it called? Uh, discover the multiverse. Um, I removed discover the multiverse, and I've added more white sources, though they didn't show up. Uh, we are on the draw again. Oh man! All right. What kind of... Alright, so I'm not expecting to win when you're on the draw and you have to mulligan down to five. It's, it's not good. <laughs> and you're up against black. Which usually means that... Uh, your creatures are just gonna die. Ores off. Maybe it's angels. Luminar. Uh, maybe it's a Orzov aggro. Hmm. Usually means now they can remove our aspirant, grow theirs, and attack. But if our aspirant survives, we might be able to. Uh, this way so we we can get a block with the tenacious underdog we probably won't be able to block the luminar aspirant well unless they put the plus one plus one on the tenacious underdog in which case we'll just block the aspirant well they most likely won't attack unless they have removal there's a good chance they'll have removal well it seems like they have more white than black so maybe they are a kind of like a mono white build Okay. Alright. This is a good land to put in there and then uh We'll do that. Oh, they have a wandering emperor, don't they? Yeah, they have a Wandering Emperor. We'll end our turn. Because there's a good chance if we try to fight them, they'll play their Wandering Emperor. And then, uh... 
Put a plus one, plus one counter. Man. All right, so what we're going to do is add two plus one, plus one counters to the Kodama. Ooh, they didn't attack. Alright. Put this on. We'll play out our crack. Oh, we should have done it before, uh, before combat. Or after combat. That's alright. It's all right. It's all right. We'll uh. Continue putting it on there. No, we could have put it on the crack. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say there. See, that's what I was afraid of. Oh, they wanted the minus two, but they're gonna have to wait till their turn. So they kind of screwed up there, We've got the but not really. Fight. But they'll have to pay two on their turn. This is what you get for hurting my people. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, it's the best way to do this. I think. Do this now? Or wait till end of their turn? I have no idea what they're uh <laughs> Okay. Now you've done it. Okay. Are not much of a roadblock. So we do this now. Okay, we can't attack yet. Oh, man. This is just like a plus one, plus one counter wars. They have... I guess we could attack because the Wandering Emperor couldn't really do a minus there. Strike fast and strike hard. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so... Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna start growing our creatures and hopefully we'll have a chance to attack before they find a solution, like a sweeper. 
But it might be a little bit too late now. They have enough mana. I think we can attack in next turn. One. Show them how we greet our enemies. Oh, man, I don't like this. Hook Massacre. Probably. Yep. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, like I said. Uh, that's it. That's it. Oh, man. Ah, oh, man, I should have been attacking in earlier. But... I hate those stalemates because this deck... Um, when, you, when, when you get into a stalemate, this deck doesn't really do that well. Because... We don't have removal. At least not a very clean one. I don't know how good it is to play this out. Wow. Oh, man. The opponent has way too much now. Um, it's we need to draw one of our big bombs. Like, drawing all this land is not helping either. We've had, I mean, like, we decent for all, I guess. Strike fast and strike hard. It's not as good as our opponent. Come on. This is so dumb. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, look at all these cards they have. It doesn't matter. I'm done. Alright, alright, alright. There's nothing I could have drawn that would have made a difference. So I just played a game, uh, the opponent played a swamp, and then uh, conceded. <laughs> uh, I hope all my wins aren't going to be like, like that. All right, we're on the draw. Oh, by the way, um, that game where, uh, that last game where I'm not going to include in here, so far is the only game I was on the play. All right, well... We've got some start. They've got a better start. I think I'm gonna go for the other hopeful initiate here. And maybe I can play Fight Ring next turn and get like an attack in. 
Maybe. Maybe not. If they attack with a tenacious underdog, should I block? I could block. Double block and they kill one. Oh, okay. All right. Hmm. Two innkeepers? Why not? All right. Laid out all my weak creatures. <laughs> all right. Um, if I add two, I could probably kill Nisha's underdog. Do I really want to attack in? I don't think so. Okay, I don't know. That'll be all right. Attacks and turn. So, so, maybe I should have played the Kodama. Five three. Hmm. I think we do like this, and then you like that. Attack like that. And then, uh, uh, we'll get a blue mana out. Maybe I should have gotten a green mana out. I don't know. Might take a lot of damage here. They might take a lot of damage here. Okay. A strange way to attack, especially if. That means you're planning on discarding three spells. Well, I guess you're expecting this creature here to... Uh, I 
guess. I guess that's a thing you can do. Should I take eight? Uh, yeah, why not? No blocks. All right, so. Gotta do it this way. Alright, so we can go like this, like this, like this. Yeah. Yep, three attacks. So if they block here, oh, they don't. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think here. I guess that's fine. We can destroy the wedding festivity. Man, I'm sorry. I'm so concentrated in this game. I, ha I don't think I've been commentating very well. Um, not to make excuses, but very tired. It's kind of late. And uh, I'm using all my brain power to try and uh, win this game here. <laughs> oh, man. I really want to win this game here. They got a lot of mana. They do have an obscure interceptor. But they didn't see a way out. Alright. Whew! Alright, slowly climbing back up that platinum tier 2. Alright. This is probably going to be my last game for tonight. Up against... Milk is my potion. I went against... I went up against this opponent before. I'm trying to remember what they were playing. I think... Zorius Tempo is what they were playing. This is definitely... A, and we're on the draw again. We can keep this. Yeah, we'll keep the Vorinclex. Maybe we don't need two hopeful initiates. No. I think we need both. Because most likely, the first one's going to get removed. Unless there's, uh, this person is still playing Zorius Tempo. That is not Zorius Tempo. That is definitely... Rakdos Artifacts. Ooh, we don't have green mana. We don't have green mana. Definitely don't have green mana. Like I said, instantly killed. Green mana? Ooh, green mana, yes, but... Tapped green mana. That's not cool. Well, hopefully they're not their hands not stacked full of uh, removal. Three, 
four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so they he did. Alright. So we could go for Prosperous Innkeeper, but I think we'll go with the uh, Duelist here. I think, right? I believe that's the right choice. So they might have a Deadly Dispute. Or... Yep. Okay. Maybe looking for their anvil. So if they don't have removal, we can... We can attack with both creatures next turn. Again, depending on what, what they play. Maybe like an anvil... Well, crap. I swear, Mihook Massacre is like bane of my existence. Like, I might need. I'm gonna have to start. I removed. I removed uh, counter spells from this deck because. I mean, if I, if I had a counter spell in my hand, I wouldn't be able to play it. Because I'm playing things on curve, right? So I can't really. can't really uh, afford to put counters in here because I, I never have the timing to play it. Maybe in the late game when I have like a bunch of mana out. But usually by then <laughs> decks like this have cleared up cleared all my uh, creatures. So if I could have gotten Prosperous Innkeeper out on turn 2 I could have gotten the Reservoir Kraken out by turn 3, the Mihook Massacre would have done not a whole lot. So I can't really afford to discard any of neither of these cards, because I need Process Innkeeper to play Elspeth in turn after that. Just in case I don't draw any lands. Go sow some chaos. So we'll see. Is we'll see. My entertainment. So yeah, I was gonna say they should decline there. Yep, didn't get it. But at least All right. We'll go ahead and just put the uh, counter here. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure they're going to tap it. Just fine by me. Hopefully they don't have another... Uh... Removal. Defy me, and you'll lose everything. So the question is, okay, we get Elspeth out. I think we're going to do a uh, plus one on Luminar, maybe? Get some lifelink on it. Oh, okay. Well... Or do we go for the fight rigging? I think we go for the fight rigging. That's what we're here for. And uh, see if we hit something good, like a boring Plex. All right, so we need the fight rigging to go off first. Let's just go here. <laughs> I 
There we go. Um, so what would have happened is we'll get Boring Clex out. This would become a 3-3. Three, three. Um, and I think that would have been enough. Yeah, so that would have been enough between Boring Clex and the fish to kill both Obnixiluses. And if they tap down their um, Vulgian Epicure to tap the Kraken, we could have attacked in with the Luminarch and the uh, Prosperous Innkeeper. If not, then we could attack with the uh, Kraken. Well, anyway, um, let's let's uh, let's break down the deck and see what kind of improvements we can make. And that's it for the gameplay portion. So, what do I think about this deck? I think it's a lot of fun. I think the addition of Hopeful Initiate was a good idea. Definitely gives the deck a little bit more options. And it gives it a way to remove enchantments. I definitely was surprised at how well the Disciplined Duelist did when it, it showed up. Might be able to even go like four of. Like, I might do something like this and maybe go down on the Tarisk. Something like that. Uh, Reservoir Kraken. I don't think this deck really helps the Kraken shine. I mean, it, it's definitely... I, I think the Kraken works well in this deck. But if, if I wanted to use the Reservoir Kraken to its fullest potential, I don't know if this deck is it. But I think it's close. Vorinclex. Man, Vorinclex I, I think is uh, really good in this deck. Especially with fight rigging. Yeah, overall, I was actually pleasantly surprised at how well this deck did. Uh, I did remove a few games where I lost, so... I think the overall win ratio is out of 8 games, I had 3 losses, 5 wins. That's still pretty good. Um, I'm still not sure if it's Prosperous Innkeeper or Gala Greeters. Though it's definitely going to be an easier choice when rotation comes around. Then it's definitely going to be Gala Greeters. Um, you could definitely replace the task with maybe uh, Titan of Industry. I, I think Titan of Industry has a lot more utility. The Tarisk is just a really good finisher. Like, playing it on turn 4 usually means it's game over. It was just unfortunate that I wasn't able to showcase that in today's video. But anyway, uh, I think that's all I have for my final thoughts. If you enjoyed the content, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps my channel immensely, and I really appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for watching, and remember, have fun playing Magic.